Today, we're checking out the skipped content. This is that cut content, that delicious cut content for season three, episode three of ReZero by Any News. If you like Any News, or rather, if you like this video, go and check out more of Any News' content. All right, maybe you like stuff that's not ReZero. Maybe you like stuff that's other isekai. Go check out some of those other videos, all right? You're gonna get introduced to a world of, of cut content, breakdowns, all right? With all that out the way, if you like this video, then like the video, subscribe to the channel, all right? You can check out my reactions to ReZero up in the corner. Also, you can check out the full length version over on Patreon. Plus, uh, stop by my live streams on Wednesdays and you could literally watch ReZero with me and the rest of the community. So for now, let's watch this. Bonk. With so much happening in such a short amount of time, it's easy to overlook things like Subaru's new power. Hey, it's not, not often he gets new tools cassons. added to his arsenal, but with the addition of Beatrice, he's actually developed three. That's three one-of-a-kind okay. abilities completely unique to him, one of which we actually got to see in action against Regulus. This was just a small part in an otherwise grand encounter, so in addition to all the craziness that happened here, I'll also go over the more detailed past involving Garfield and his mother. Everything this intense and emotional episode of ReZero left out from the light novels. Before we get started though, chapters 2-4 from volume 17 of the light novel. Last week I had stopped midway through the Amelia and Sirius fight, so to start there, a whole conversation was cut. Before okay. closing out the fight in a blazing flame of rage, Sirius first made clear what she deemed as love. To her, okay. it was the ideal of many becoming one. The bonds- The ideal of many becoming one is her idea of love. Forged by shared feelings, allowing everyone to experience another's joy and sadness. Wait. Empathy? Is empathy love to her? This was something Sirius knew Amelia could never obtain herself, but out of empathy? innate curiosity to understand it anyway, Amelia still went on to question it. She was truly intrigued enough to confidently ask, what love? This only stirred Sirius's anger more and sent her deeper Ooh. into another spiral of threats and insults. Oh my god, yeah, she It had led scary. to the charge that we saw in the anime and the overall outcome where Regulus would have to save her. If you're wondering why Subaru couldn't do anything to save her himself, it's because Sirius's authority had taken effect on him. Mm -hmm. The fear mm -hmm. Tina had being Sirius's captive quickly spread in an infinite loop between him, Luspel, and Beatrice. All three trembled as- Oh, that explains why they didn't do shit. I was kind of wondering. They didn't like read the eyes. They didn't do anything to like- Fear became their entire existence. This paved the path for Regulus to step in instead, leading to an even longer rant about respect. You see, in addition to defining the basics of common courtesy, Regulus also suggested that perhaps Subaru denied his rights on purpose. That, or maybe Subaru was just unintelligent. Either way, the argument Regulus made was supported by the same superficial logic as Sirius's. What I mean is that, sure, their remarks may sound reasonable when they're speaking, but that forced rationality was always underpinned by these insane statements nestled within. It was obscenity hidden behind okay. the facade. I like that. I like that. I like that, like, they can rationally break down their shit, but it's still crazy, regardless of how rationally they break it down. Out of normalcy. Regulus then went on to directly contest Sirius's idea of love, since her clinging to a dead man was fundamentally flawed. Kind of spit in there. Reason being that, for him, if the person he loved died, then it only made sense to proactively search for another. That was what Regulus oh. believed to be a law of the world. The ex oh, actually, you know what? I go back. Her loving someone, I would say that there's levels to this, right? I think that you can still love someone that had died, but... I feel like it is kind of wild to be obsessed with someone that has died. You know what I was going to say? Unless maybe you spent like an extremely long amount of time with them. And when you think about it, if we do find out that Sirius is in fact Fortuna, she did spend quite a while with Beetlejuice, even if it wasn't like, you know, even if it wasn't like an actual romantic relationship, there was definitely like, they had it, it just wasn't, like, a, a official? I don't know how to describe that. But yeah, hers feels like more of an obsession than, like, just normal love. And I think that in, in time, you learn to move on from these things, right? Extent of nature is... And then, for, for, for corny ass, bro, corny ass is, like, I, I, low-key, I'll say, he kind of feel a little lusty. And this is what I've mentioned before about all of these different uh, Sin Archbishops. 
they kind of have so many similarities to the sin that they do not represent. He knew it. To discipline. Like he got all these wives. He's over here talking about virgin and shit. I feel like he's a little lusty. Bay that made Sirius Snow different than garbage, and that was a notion that didn't sit too well with her. So, as she swung her chains out of pure, unrelenting anger, the ones that looked as if they had made direct impact did nothing as they bounced right off of him. It was as if they were reflecting right off the side of his face. This made it clear that Regulus had the advantage, which made Subaru worried that he might just kill Sirius. It would mean the end for him and everyone else in the square. Luckily, he didn't, but the fear of facing down two archbishops was starting to get overwhelming. Yep, if of course. And then that fear, him bomb, 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 way, bomb, bomb, bomb. Subaru knew that he wouldn't have been able to do anything. So it's because she was there and lending him her power that Subaru felt he could stand and actually do something. It was enough <sighs> motivation to produce a somewhat decent attack on Regulus. Subaru knew that he wouldn't be able to hurt Regulus, but by at least binding him, he thought perhaps he could hinder his movements. Shamak was then supposed to nullify his senses, but just as we saw, it didn't have any effect whatsoever. Which is it crazy. It forced Subaru to use his new special ability, EMM. The first of three spells jointly developed by him and Beatrice, and the only of its kind to exist in the entire world. Ooh, As an that's cool. spell activated through the transfer of mana from Subaru to Beatrice, Subaru would send mana directly from his broken gate, then in return, an invisible magic field would cover his entire body. The result was an absolute defense which physically cut him from the world itself. It that's prevented sick. anything from interacting with Subaru. That is so sick. I love that. So, regardless of whether it was a person or thing, any being covered by this invisible field of magic would find themselves... And this feels like it's going to show up again. I want to see this shit happen again. That's a really cool ability. Moved from the physical plane, albeit temporarily. It's what allowed Subaru to dodge Regulus the way that he did. Whereas death was what awaited him had Regulus made contact with him, Ooh, what happened fuck. instead was Subaru completely bypassing him. That was the effect of EMM. Unfortunately, mm. it didn't last very long, though, as in its current state, one hit was the most that it could cover him for. That mm. said, it was just enough time for Subaru to land a hit himself. An initial physical punch that was nullified completely, then a secondary invisible punch that had actually landed. Mm. The first physical punch what he learned about his fight against fucking Garfield. Had provided some pretty useful information, since while Subaru knew that he felt his fist make contact, the lack of damage or any other sign of literally anything happening made it clear Regulus had damage nullification of his own. It was as mm. if he existed within his own permanent EMM state. The outcome mm. was vastly different when Subaru's invisible providence landed since the force from that had actually gone to stagger Regulus. Whereas every other attack did absolutely nothing, this one half-baked authority surprisingly did. Interesting. Now, so what's up with that? Like Regulus tanked it just like all the others, but by having it directly contrast with the physical punch made immediately before, it makes it clear that this was different. Somehow Subaru had managed to bypass Regulus's defenses. His attack oh. didn't just bounce off like how all the others did. Subaru didn't have time to realize this in the moment though, since his primary focus was saving Amelia. Because invisible that is really fucking interesting. So he has a way to actually hurt Regulus. He has a way to actually hurt him. Although, the result of using it began to torment his insides. You see, as Ooh. a forbidden art that exceeded Subaru's body's capacity, invisible providence corrupted his soul every time he used it. It oh. left his body reeling in pain and deteriorated the one thing that should never be touched. This was the price of using an authority that was incomplete, and it often left Subaru looking like this. All of this wasn't as useless as you might think it was, though, since this little skirmish revealed crucial information about Regulus. It had showed Subaru that Greed's movements were sluggish. If he had to classify it in terms of levels, Regulus's skills for combat were just above that of a novice. Like, Subaru himself believed that even he was more competent. To him, Regulus's style of fighting oh. seemed amateur through and through. This provided hope oh. to an otherwise bleak situation, since lethal attacks didn't mean anything if they didn't connect. It was a potential weakness Subaru thought maybe he could capitalize on. With their fight now pretty much mm, done, though... That's really intriguing!
So he might be strong as fuck and capable in his actual like fighting, his fighting ability is weak. Like, yeah, he's strong. He can hit you with this attack that fucking blows your leg off, right? His defense is crazy. You can't even hurt him. But like the actual skill, the technique that goes into the fighting is like a novice. And that's likely because he relies on the strength of the, uh, those, those uh, attacks and the fact that he can like basically not take damage. He relies on those things. Regulus would go on to speak about why he wanted Amelia. Apparently, he didn't uphold his vow last time, so in accordance with his ideal of seeking out a new partner, Regulus resolved to do so this time. He wasn't gonna yield Ugh. when it came to living the tranquil life he thought he deserved. He would protect and Oh, he just Amelia kidnapped her and like, I'm gonna marry her. And he would do so just because it was his right to. Everything was all so he could maintain his own small slice of happiness. If it meant protecting that, then Regulus had no problem exploiting the powers he'd been granted. So, once again, Subaru was confronted with more twisted logic, but what terrified him more was the conviction with which Regulus spoke it with. For the first time, Subaru felt genuine fear from Regulus. It was as if the words he spoke were how he truly felt. This led Subaru to deny Regulus vehemently, stating how Amelia was his bride instead. It wasn't waifu like how the anime translated it, but instead bride which is a lot more fitting given the context. Oh, now, it was in the meantime wow. Regulus was charging up, getting ready to use the third of their original spells. They still didn't know how Regulus's damage nullification worked, but whatever this next attack was, it was apparently very much worth trying. It was right before Subaru could unleash it, though, that Sirius would intervene and stop him revealing her passionate interest in who Subaru was now. Before, she'd only ever been looking at Amelia and Beatrice, but now she was staring directly at him. So, to Subaru, she saw the, the fucking Romane unseen hand. prominent family in the witch cult was always just a joke that he'd only entertain in passing. To find out it was actually a legitimate husband and wife team, well, that was way beyond anything he'd ever expected. It made Sirius's hatred towards Amelia all the more confusing since her ties to Satella should have made her an object of worship. Her desires directly conflicted with what Betelgeuse wanted. Everything came to an end once the noon bell. Yeah, but I think it's pretty obvious that like if if Betelgeuse is like, oh, I love I love more than I love you, Sirius, I love Satella. Oh. Oh yeah, then I fucking hate Satella because you like her more than you like me. Rang, which surprisingly enough, Sirius I think it makes perfect sense. Though she clearly wasn't satisfied with the outcome, whatever was compelling her to move on, it was much more important than her reunion with her beloved. She did, however, exit on one final affirmation, once again proclaiming her ideology, except this time mixing parts of Betelgeuse's. Specifically, the notion that pain makes you savor life, and life exists so that one can prove their love. So, if love to her is the wish to become one, then this joining of pain was a true expression of it. It was a sure. statement that went to challenge Beatrice's own idea of love. She, however, retorted with her own example, basically saying how her and Subaru became one long ago, yet by not becoming anything like Sirius, it was enough to deny everything she stood for. She mm. had essentially stood her ground and rejected the archbishop in front of her. Beatrice didn't mm, I like that. focused on that for long, though, as healing was the main priority now. Unfortunately, Wrath's authority didn't share that healing, so if Beatrice wanted to save everyone, then she would have to do so person to person. Fast forward now to when Subaru wakes up, and aside from retelling the situation to Al and Felix, the only thing worth mentioning is the special condition binding Subaru and Beatrice. As a special type of spirit, Beatrice couldn't accept mana from anyone other than Subaru. It's a condition that's effectively sidelined her since Subaru simply can't supply sufficient amounts of mana. It's the main burden Beatrice constantly has to deal with. This made Subaru's options very limited and provided even fewer ways to navigate this. If we were to look on the bright side though, I guess the only bit of good news was that Beatrice's condition wasn't gonna worsen. She just needed help waking up, something no one present could do right now. Krush would then arrive to discuss what happened, meeting Subaru in the field hospital since to ask Subaru to come to her would be inappropriate. It's the stage for the meeting that we saw in the anime, which is actually the point where the episode ends. 
the stuff with Garfield mm. happens all the way after, essentially serving as a bit of a flashback. So, to switch okay. gears to Let's that, jump into the, the Garfield best place stuff. to start is at the house. It was at this point that Garfield was still uncertain whether this was actually his mother or not. The Look last time like he'd her, seen but... her was when he was just a baby, and the only reason he was even able to recognize her now was simply due to his vivid trial back in Sanctuary. That mm. made it clear that his mother died searching for their father, so as far as Garf knew, the reunion he truly desired was nothing more than a distant fantasy. To him, this Thiara Thompson could not be Alicia Tinsel. She was just someone coincidentally identical. That's what Garfield wanted to think, but everything about Licia's behavior indicated otherwise. It was then that Garfield would remember Licia's past, recounting every tragedy as it happened to her. So, it all started with... How the fuck did he know this shit at one years old? ...her family's debt, leading her to be sold to slave traders while still a child. You remember Those shit from... slave traders were then raided by Demi... What the fuck is this? She came to this world from the, from the, from the Mushoku Tensei world? ...human bandits, and Licia would then become a slave to them instead. They would eventually abandon her after she became pregnant Why with is he Federica, using Mushoku Tensei leaving stuff? her to be That's picked so up by yet another group of bandits. It was then that she would give birth to Frederica, and that was a time that neither really spoke about. All Garfield knew after was that as soon as Licia became pregnant with him, that's when both her and Frederica fled to safety. It was the move which would result in her inevitable home at Sanctuary. So, this was the misfortune that was Licia's life, at least up until she was adopted by Roswell. To him, she was described as both mysterious and incomprehensible, a person hmm. who always kept her happiness close. The reason why was never made clear, but Roswell imagined it was the motivation keeping her going. These were the words Roswell shared one night when him, Garp, and Otto were drinking. Garfield's own impressions were a little bit different, though, since- Oh, so that's how he knows more about his his mom, because he heard about his mom from other- For his mother to leave a peaceful place like Sanctuary, well, that just didn't make any sense to him. It made her seem like somewhat of an airhead, especially since it was the decision which he thought led to their death. In the end, Garfield still didn't know what his mother was thinking back then, and more importantly, the source of her happiness still remained a mystery. They were burning questions he hoped at least one day he might be able to find an answer to. In any case, with Fred's sister constantly urging Garfield out, he didn't feel welcome until Fred himself said something. The way he mm. came up and grabbed onto his sleeve froze Garfield and filled his head with regret. It made him question Reminds why him he a even lot of come here to begin with. Of his, of the nail himself in the coffin too. was seeing the mutual love between Liara and her husband, which to Garfield was affection both unmistakable and unbearable. Perhaps she, it made him feel like family. he was being robbed of something that was rightfully his. Whatever mm. it was stirring his emotions, the need to run away was so overwhelming that he didn't need- Yeah, I get it. I understand this, like, conflicting feeling that he, he likely felt. He feels both, like, he deserved the opportunity to have a, a loving mother and father and, like, a, a, a happy family, all four of them together. Like, he deserved that opportunity. But also, he- doesn't want to ruin the happiness she has by introducing himself as an element that like fucks it all up. He just wants her to live in this sort of ignorance of a former life and be happy. I didn't even realize he was dragging Mimi while doing so. His grip on her wrist was so incredibly tight that when he'd finally stopped, her arm had actually turned blue from it. It was then that Gaelic Damn. would arrive to ask Garf his question, which would in turn reveal a truth that Garfield had never even considered before. You see, he'd always thought his mother was dead because she'd never returned, so the thought of anything else didn't really occur to him. Knowing now that he was so very wrong to make that assumption, well, that was a harsh truth that really dug into him. Now, it Oh, so on top of it, he feels like he let his mom down by not going and finding her. Because he just assumed she was dead. Mm. It was prior to saying he wasn't related to Liara that there was a swirling torrent of emotion bubbling within him making him feel sick. As soon as he said what he needed to say though, all he felt after was loss and emptiness. The reason uh -huh. why he decided not to say anything was because doing so would only cause more harm than good. It wouldn't change the fact 15 years were spent with a different family, and it wouldn't change the fact that 15 years were lost as Licia. 
The only thing it would do is burden her with the guilt of knowing she left behind something precious. And it could potentially hurt the family dynamic that she currently has. So, to put that burden not only on Liara, but also her family too? Well, Garth knew that that wouldn't be fair. His self-satisfaction didn't take priority over any of that. Sure, he alone would be the one to gain closure, but everyone else would go on to suffer. It was a burden he couldn't share, not even with Frederica or Ryuzu. Damn. So, in order to protect everyone else, Garfield knew the best thing to do was just abandon his own desires and do his best to keep everything to himself. That's really what he wanted to do, but yet again the inner conflict within him was tearing him apart. As much as he wanted to keep all of it inside, Garfield just couldn't find the strength to follow through with it. It was a constant back and forth of him wanting to be the tiger he always thought he was and the true emotion he couldn't keep contained anymore. In the end, his inner thoughts had turned into some pretty deep poetry. Tiger, tiger, where have you gone? What do I look like right now? Stars, moon, sky won't tell me what do I look like right now. Damn. That's where I'm going to end today's episode. Oh. Damn it. All right. Well, hey, man, that was good. More good cut content, giving us a better breakdown on the situation with, with Garfield. And then also, you know, kind of breaking down that whole, like, serious situation. Sirius and Reinhardt. Or rather, Sirius and Regulus. Reinhardt was episode two. Uh, see, Sirius and, and Regulus and, like, the way that Regulus acted, why he acted that way. The way that Sirius acted, why she acted that way. And then also some like parts that were cut, obviously. A lot of cut out parts that break down kind of, that, or rather not break down, but give more depth to abilities, give more depth to the scene, give more depth to the dialogue. That was great. Listen, with that said, if you want more ReZero Cut content videos, uh, let me know down in the comments if you want me to watch more of them. If you want any news to make more of them, you should probably go Watch the video yourself. Leave a comment on his video. Subscribe to his channel. Also, again, he's making more than just ReZero stuff. So if you like stuff that's not ReZero but still Isekai, check out his channel. A lot more stuff over there, okay? If you enjoyed my video, uh, click the like button. Subscribe for more. Until next time, make sure you all keep it fresh. Peace.